So what happens when a plant cell is placed in a hypertonic solution? And to begin with, what is the difference that exists between a hypertonic solution and a hypotonic solution? Further to that, maybe I can also add the word isotonic solution. Three terms there, hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic. So the topic of discussion today, or the subtopic of discussion today, is actually water relations in plants. So welcome so much to Darasa, where learning is made easy, and I'll be taking you through this lesson. My name is Mr. Ben. So welcome. Again, what happens when a plant cell is placed in a hypertonic solution? Of course, osmosis will occur. And let me remind you what osmosis is. Osmosis is a movement of water molecules from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration across a semi-permeable membrane. A different definition. Osmosis is a movement of water molecules from a hypotonic solution to a hypertonic solution across the cell membrane. So what is a hypotonic solution? What is a hypertonic solution? A hypertonic solution, two definitions again, is a solution whose solute concentration is higher than the concentration of the solvent. Okay, that is a hypertonic solution. A second definition, a hypertonic solution is a solution in which the concentration of the cell sub is lower than its concentration. Okay, essentially, that solution is higher in concentration compared to the so concentration of the cell sub. Hypotonic solution. A hypotonic solution is a solution that has got m less solutes and more solvents. Okay, the solvent concentration is more than the solute concentration. Okay, in other words, you can say it's a solution in which the cell sub is highly concentrated than actually that solution. So we say that it is a solution that is lowly concentrated than the cell sub. So those are the two definitions of the hypotonic and the hypertonic solution respectively. Now let us address the issue at hand, the matter at hand. We are talking about what exactly happens when a plant cell is placed in a hypertonic solution. Remember that a hypertonic solution in this case is a concentrated solution. A highly concentrated solution. So a good example of a hypertonic solution is probably a, a salt solution, sugar solution, okay? Those are examples of hypertonic solution. So when you place a plant cell in a hypertonic solution, you can use a, a, a real example, a real, a practical uh, example like taking a potato cube and placing it in a sugar solution and that solution must be very concentrated in sugar or salt. So what exactly happens? After some time, you will realize that the potato cube is kind of, uh, I wanted to say flaccid, but let me use the word soft. You can, you can feel it's very tender, you can press it, you can press it. And like if you take another potato cube and place it in a hypotonic solution, if you try to press it, actually you'll realize that it's very hard, okay? But now we are, we are addressing this potato cube that we placed in a hypertonic solution. So after some time, maybe 30 minutes to one hour, if you take it and then press it, you'll realize that it's kind of smooth, you know, it's very soft. So let me explain to you the sequence of events of how exactly everything happens to achieve that soft potato cube. So, the process of osmosis takes place. The process of osmosis takes place. So water is drawn from the potato cube to the hypertonic solution, which is the sugar solution, okay? Because the cell sap is lowly concentrated than the sugar solution. So water is drawn from the cell sap to the sugar solution through the process of osmosis, okay? So the plant cell shrinks and shrinks and shrinks. Okay, that means that as it shrinks, it reduces in size. Okay, as it shrinks, it reduces in size. And then the cell membrane together with the cytoplasm detaches themselves from the cell wall. Are you getting that? So the cell membrane, you know, within the cell membrane, of course, you have the, the, the tonoplast which, uh, which houses the cytoplasm. So the cell membrane detaches itself from the cell wall and that process 
uh, brings about the shrinking of the plant cell. So the shrinking of the plant cell, when placed in a hypertonic solution, we call that process plasmolysis. Okay? So again, what is plasmolysis? If you asked in an exam, what is plasmolysis? Plasmolysis is the shrinking of a plant cell when placed in a hypertonic solution. Please note the keywords there. The first keyword is the plant cell. If you just generalize and say the shrinking of a cell, that is actually not plasmolysis because I'll tell you the shrinking of an animal cell, you call that crenation. But then when you come to the shrinking of a plant cell, you call this plasmolysis. That tells you that there's a difference between crenation and plasmolysis. So don't generalize here. Okay, so the shrinking of a plant cell, plant cell, that's the first keyword. The second keyword here is the hypertonic solution. You have to specify the solution. Okay, you have to specify the solution. So the shrinking of a plant cell when placed in a hypertonic solution, you call that plasmolysis. Okay, plasmolysis can be reversed. Plasmolysis can be reversed. And let me explain how that is possible. If you take a cell that has undergone the process of plasmolysis, okay, we call it a plasmolyzed cell. If you take a plasmolyzed cell and then place that plasmolyzed cell in distilled water or a hypotonic solution, what happens? What do you think happens? You know, this plasmolyzed cell, it has not died. You need to know that, okay? It's very much alive. So if you take the plasmolyzed cell and place it in distilled water or hypotonic solution, what happens? This is what happens. Osmosis, of course, will take place whereby water will be drawn from the hypotonic solution into the cell, okay? Remember the concentration of the cell sap in this case is now higher than the concentration of the distilled water. So water will be drawn from the hypotonic solution into the cell, okay? What does that mean? The cell will begin to revive. The cell will begin to increase in size and even to become turgid, okay? It will increase in size, become turgid, bigger and bigger and bigger. Are we together? But please note, it will not burst. So, the process, the entire process whereby a plasmolyzed cell takes in water and becomes turgid again, it rejuvenates again, you call that pr process deplasmolysis. Deplasmolysis. So that is when a plant cell, a plasmolyzed plant cell, is placed in distilled water. What happens? It draws water, becomes turgid, okay? So you call that deplasmolysis. Thank you so much for watching. This has been your uh, teacher, Mr. Ben, in Darasa, where learning is made easy. Thanks for watching.